Good morning. Welcome to our annual Building a Better Long Beach event. In just a moment, Mayor Robert Garcia is going to tell you about all of the exciting developments planned and underway in the city of Long Beach. And if you don't know it already, by the time you leave here today, you're going to have a pretty clear picture of Long Beach as a city on the rise. Um, as editor of Long Beach Business Journal, my name is Samantha Mellinger, by the way, uh, it's really heartening to see so many of you here today interested in the future of our city and hopefully uh, coming along for the ride with us. So without further ado, here is Mayor Robert Garcia. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you all uh, very much and for being here uh, today. Uh, let's start, of course, by giving Samantha and the team at the Business Journal a big round of applause for all the work they do. So um, today's actually one of my favorite days uh, of the year. I look forward to doing uh, this presentation every single year. Um, development and building our city uh, to me is one of the best things about the job that I have the honor uh, of serving in, um, and it's certainly a collaborative effort. Uh, thanks to all of you that are here today. Uh, we are really building the city of tomorrow and are doing it in a way that I believe is equitable and is inclusive of all people. I want to thank a few folks uh, that are here and that are a big part of why today is even possible. Um, of course, the team that is hosting us, and that, of course, is Steve Goodling, Charlie Burney, and the entire staff of the CVB and the theater. Let's give them a big round of applause. And I know, of course, we have members of our city council here, some of our citywide elected officials, uh, our acting city manager, uh, Tom Modica. And I want to thank particularly three departments. Without their support and their hard work, not just of the department heads, but of the entire teams, these projects would not be possible. And that is the women and men of public works, of economic development, and our Planning and Development Services Department. Let's give them all a huge <laughs> round of applause for the work they do. And of course, every project that you see in front of you today is being built by hardworking people. And some of those leaders are here today, and that's the men and women of our construction trades. Let's give them a round of applause. And, and the members of our Planning Commission who most of these projects go through, and they get a chance to improve and approve for all of us to enjoy. So to our planning commission, let's also give them a big round of applause. Thank you so much. So as, you, as you're all aware, uh, Long Beach right now is booming. Uh, we have tons of construction happening. And in fact, one of the very first things that I said when I got elected mayor was that I wanted to be judged once we see how much construction actually happens. So I think we're doing a pretty good job when it comes to construction across the city. And before we talk about specific development, I do want to share with you a little bit about where the city is currently. What's the big picture of Long Beach? So you're probably all aware that, first and foremost, the unemployment rate right now in our city is the lowest it's ever been since we've been recording the unemployment rate. Now, we're averaging, absolutely. <laughs> we're averaging about a 4.5% unemployment rate, depending on the month, and that'll go up or go down. But what's important to note is at the height of the recession, the Long Beach unemployment rate was almost at 15%. Our recovery from 15% down to where we are today is actually one of the best economic unemployment recoveries of any big city in the state of California. And that is thanks to entrepreneurs, small business owners, and the folks that are investing back into our community. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone has a job or that they have the job that they need to support their family. But it does mean that right now we are experiencing unprecedented growth and access to jobs. So I'm very proud of this number, and you all should be as well. And when you talk about the economy, we know that right now we have over $3.5 billion dollars under construction happening across the city. This includes projects at the Port of Long Beach. It includes housing projects across the city and agency projects happening in our schools. 
This number you will begin to see will increase year after year as more projects go online. So we're very proud of this increase. And when you think about jobs and what's happening in the city, and all the construction that's happening as it relates to housing, we set a goal, in fact, in my first state of the city, that we would build or construct 4,000 residential units. I'm happy to report we've already blown past that goal. We have already under construction, or about to be under construction, 4,000 units across the city. We know that translates into actually more people, because more people obviously live in these units than one single person. And so we've set a new goal in our city, and that's to add 8,000 residential units across our city. That will double this number, and it's a number I also believe that we'll be able to achieve. In addition, we have a growth of jobs. Every year in Long Beach, we add over 2,000 new jobs across the city. This is just the FY19 number alone. And this number, if you add it year to year, we are averaging about 2,000 jobs that are being added in some form or another across our community. And that's also a number we should be very proud of. I want to give a round of applause to all the small business owners and the entrepreneurs that are investing in our community. Thank you very much for all the work that you do. And I want to talk to you about probably what's the most important number. Already this year, crime and overall violent crime has reduced by over 10% from last year. Right now, right now we are experiencing the lowest levels of crime since we started recording the crime rate in the 1970s. Now, it's important to understand that at one time, the city was averaging over 100 homicides a year. Then we began averaging about 70 a year. Then we started averaging about 50 a year. Today, our city averages about 30 homicides a year. Now, every single one of those, of course, is a real person and is connected to a family and is tragic. But for a city of almost half a million people to be averaging 30 homicides a year is incredible work that is being done every day by our Long Beach police officers, our community organizations, our parks, and our librarians. And so the city and where we are today is an exciting place to be. I mean, I'm excited about Long Beach. And I think all of you guys are here because you're excited as well. And so I'm very happy to share with you today this development update about where we are as a community and as a city. So let's get started. As we know, and as we can see right outside, there's a lot happening when it comes to development. So I wanna share with you some of the major projects that are happening across the city. So let's start. First, we're gonna talk a little bit about East Long Beach. There's finally some projects that for a long time we've been waiting for are beginning to come out of the ground. Now, let's start with one of the projects I'm the most excited about, and that's probably because I love food so much. We have built what is probably one of the best modern food halls anywhere in the region at LBX at Douglas Park. And you have not been to try all the amazing food choices there. It's an incredible experience. And the Douglas Park project is now almost complete, thanks to the Saris Regis team and so many others. So please try the LBX at the hangar, incredible food choices. And at that Douglas Park development, you are seeing the final parcel actually being developed. What once was an enormous, enormous manufacturing facility that then sat empty for years and years has now completely transformed to a major job center with light manufacturing, technology, space satellites, and so much more. So we're very proud that Douglas Park Northwest will complete the Master Douglas Park project. In addition, not too far from the site, we have Staybridge Suites coming up. This new hotel project is actually being developed adjacent to the Holiday Inn, and as you can see, is over 125 new guest rooms that will add to hotel rooms here in our city, and we're very proud of this project. And not too far, of course, from there, we are about to begin, in 2020, phase two of our Long Beach Airport terminal improvements. Now, we all remember when we did the last big renovation of the airport. We added a beautiful concourse, we made renovations, of course, to the historic terminal, 
And it's really become, I believe, one of the best airports to fly out of anywhere in the country. And, it, and you don't got to take my word for it. You see, whether it's USA Today or Time Magazine or CNN, always put us in the top 10 airports across the country. So phase two begins 2020, and what are we going to do? We're going to continue to restore the historic terminal. We're going to completely renovate the rented car area, so we'll actually have a facility. We're going to completely renovate and change where folks pick up their luggage and their baggage, so you actually can have an experience that's a little bit more welcoming and inviting. And you can continue to see better concessions and a better flow in and out of our airport. Our airport will continue to be a great municipal airport. And I know there are members here of our team that run our airport, and I want to give them a round of applause for the amazing work they do for Long Beach Airport and our city. Not too far in East Long Beach, we also have the Dorado Project, which are single family homes that are being built out in East Long Beach. So these are 40 homes, and that's, those are actually under construction right now. And at the former site of the post office, we have Pacific Edge Industrial, which will really will be a sister project to Douglas Park that will also have light manufacturing and industrial as well. And so we're excited uh, to hear uh, what manufacturing and what businesses will be moving in on this site. And if you drive by right now, you can see the construction happening as we speak. And of course, finally, this October, in just a few weeks, we will be finally opening up Second and PCH. Now, Second and PCH is a long time coming. Uh, we all remember uh, the old uh, hotel that was on the site, and we remember the debates and conversations about building a project. Uh, I'm, inc I'm incredibly proud and thankful to the entire team that's worked on this project, the CenterCal team, for getting quality retailers and restaurants on the site. We know that Whole Foods is an anchor, and we know that it's attracting some of the best names in both retail and the restaurant world. So I hope you join me in a couple of weeks and come to the CPCH and second grand opening. And I also hope you join me in giving them a round of applause and a thank you for all their work that they're doing on this project. Also, we should have news very soon on the Silver Sand Hotel project. This project is on Ocean Boulevard, just right next to the park. And if you've noticed a fence off site, they have resubmitted plans for this four-story, 56-unit uh, condo and possible hotel room project. And so we're excited that hopefully in 2020, this project gets off the ground as well. Absolutely. I know. It's about time. And I also want to share with you, for those of you that use the traffic circle, uh, we are actually about to invest in 2020 um, uh, a, a, a significant amount of resources to create a special project at the circle. We're going to be completely re-landscaped. It's going to be completely relit. It's going to include one of those large Long Beach signs that you're beginning to see off the 710. And it's going to go and it's going to connect with all the adjacent new retail and restaurants that are opening up along the traffic circle. And so the circle will become a really great experience and also very welcoming across the city as people are coming in and out of the community. And also a project that's been discussed probably for as long as I've been in Long Beach. Over at 300 Studebaker, we're finally getting a light manufacturing industrial center that create more jobs across East Long Beach and the whole city. So as you can see, we are trying to bring in good paying jobs for people to not just live in Long Beach, but to work in Long Beach. And in time for the Olympics, we are making strong progress on the Belmont Beach Aquatic Center. And I know, and I'm excited because our city manager, Tom Modica, is probably the most excited person about this project as it's coming up. And this project, which we're working with our partners at the Coastal Commission, which we know uh, makes things take just a little bit longer than, than we would like, um, <laughs> is making really good progress. And, uh, and Councilwoman Price, with her team, along with the community, are working really hard to ensure that we end up with a real home run project. And I've committed before, and will continue to commit, this project will be built, and we're very excited about our new pool. And really, it's going to be a showcase for when the Olympics are here in 2026. And adjacent to that, not too far, Cal State Long Beach is building almost a 500-unit new dormitory right there on Atherton. Uh, these new dorms are state-of-the-art, sustainable, and it's going to allow our students more opportunities to live on campus. There's a huge demand at Cal State Long Beach for students to live on campus or adjacent to campus. And we know, because it's also more expensive when it relates to rents, 
This is gonna provide students with another option and an affordable option to live on campus here on these new Cal State Long Beach dorms. So I wanna thank Cal State Long Beach and the President Jane Connolly for pushing forward on this project. So let's talk a little bit now and go to the northern section of our city. Um, we have uh, two councilmen that are incredibly excited about all the projects happening up there. Of course, uh, Councilman Richardson and Councilman Austin, and there is excitement to be had. Um, I, I, I've shared with folks that to me, um, uh, all the next big stuff right now is happening in North Long Beach. Um, there, is, there are folks moving up there, there are young entrepreneurs opening up businesses, and I'm very bullish on the future of this part of our city. And as you can see, there's some great projects coming up in the years ahead. We know we recently opened up the Riverdale project. That project is complete. A bunch of new families have, have come in, have moved there, and have built a really great community. Uh, this is over 131 residential units that have opened up single family homes. And along with those, we have a bunch of projects under construction. If you drive through North Long Beach, one of the things you'll probably notice for the last few years is a lot of big, empty lots. Finally, those lots are being developed and built. The first one is Uptown Commons. Now, Uptown Commons is right there on Atlantic Boulevard. It's a full block development. and It's going to be bringing in new restaurants, new retail, and services that the community is really asking for. Not too far from Uptown Commons is the Uptown, another commercial center that is going to have great restaurants, services, as well as retail, but most importantly, I hear, it's also going to have a brewery. And so for those of you beer lovers, you'll actually be able to go up to North Long Beach and also enjoy some great Long Beach beer, which is going to be really exciting. So we're very excited about the Uptown project. Uh, in addition to that, this is a pretty exciting project. Uh, this bridge development is actually replacing an old existing refinery, and they're creating over 400,000 square feet for industrial and manufacturing uses. This is a great reuse of a site that many in the community wanted to see uh, re reimagined and rethought. And so we're excited to have a project that's coming in and taking over what used to be uh, a, a refinery that will continue some work, but in a much different way uh, with, 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 with a much better facade as, as well. And probably the most exciting project that's happening uh, in the northern part of the city is the beat. If you drive down Atlantic Boulevard, you know that there's a lot of empty storefronts as you go into the northern part of the city. This, of course, is a major proposed four-block village-style development. It's the developer of the lab, which we know out in Costa Mesa, uh, the developer of also the Anaheim Packing District, which many of you have probably been to. That's an incredible development. And so this project is taking all those empty storefronts and a lot of those empty spaces along Atlantic and transforming them into a walkable, accessible village for the community and the North Long Beach area. They are focused on small businesses, maker spaces, small coffee shops, and live workspaces where folks can live but also provide a service back into the community. It's a very progressive concept. The developers are very excited to invest here in Long Beach, and this will be a transformational project for Atlantic Avenue and the northern part of the city. And every single week, this project moves just a step forward. So we're very excited about the progress and about the years ahead as this project develops. Can we give this developer a round of applause? Because they are investing significant amounts of dollars here in Long Beach. Also in North Long Beach, we're building new housing. Uh, city Ventures is actually building two projects not too far from each other, right there on Long Beach Boulevard. The first is 33 units of a townhome project, which we're excited about. And the second is another 16 unit of townhomes. And so these projects are quality housing for residents. We need additional housing in North Long Beach. And so we thank City Ventures for their investment in, this, in these two projects in North Long Beach. So round of applause for the North Long Beach projects. We're excited for those. A lot of good stuff. And of course, along with those, uh, we have some really great projects happening in the central area of our city. Um, I know that uh, Vice Mayor Andrews is excited about these. Some of these are adjacent to Councilmember Supernaw's area. And so we're, we're excited about these projects that are happening across the city, but especially in the center. There is, and you're about to hear, about a ton of projects in Midtown as they relate to affordable housing. We're building a dense central city especially along Long Beach Boulevard in transit, to accommodate 
seniors, educators, low-income families that live in our city that need access to good housing. And I'm really proud of many of these projects you're going to hear about right now. Starting off, though, I want to talk a little bit more about beer. <laughs> Trademark Brewing, if you have not been, is really just a total success story. You cannot go there or drive by without seeing dozens and sometimes hundreds of people enjoying good quality Long Beach beer. This, this brewery just opened, and if you have not checked it out, you must go. It's a huge success right there on Anaheim. It used to be, quite frankly, an empty space. So I want to thank those business owners for investing in Long Beach and adding to what is now a huge collection of breweries all across the city, in East Long Beach, in North Long Beach, in the center of the city, and across downtown. Breweries are opening up across the community and adding to what we know as the beer economy. Adjacent to Trademark Brewing, this building also recently renovated and is now an exciting climbing gym and fitness center. Again, adding and making sure that we have quality spaces on Anaheim Boulevard in the center part of our city. And not too far from there, we're opening up a facility that is really critical and important to our community. MHA, as you know, is our city's largest partner when it comes to ensuring that people that are suffering through mental illness or need assistance in mental health get the care and support that they need. This MHA facility will ensure that people that are experiencing homelessness or folks that need immediate support will have somewhere to go, get services, and also get access to workforce development. There's gonna be a cafe all up along that first floor at this project just north of, the, of, the 19th, of, of 19th on Long Beach Boulevard that will be a cafe that will, the employees will be people formal, formerly experiencing homelessness and that are experiencing homelessness. They'll be able to learn work skills, gain experience, and provide services back to the community. And I want to thank MHA for this incredible project and partnership. And let's give them a round of applause. Thank you so much for this incredible work. And now we have a series of projects that are happening along Long Beach Boulevard, most of which are affordable, and they're a great project that the city has invested in our affordable housing dollars as well. First is the Spark at Midtown, which is almost 100 units for formerly homeless and low-income residents. This is under construction right now. We also have Vista del Puerto, which is also affordable housing. It's, got, it's a five-story development, almost 50 units of, low, of, of units that are low-income for our community, and is also right now under construction here, right, right adjacent to Long Beach Boulevard. We also have Las Ventanas, another project, if you look, which has got almost 101 affordable units and ground, ground floor retail that is currently under construction right now on Long Beach Boulevard. We also have the Long Beach Garden Condominiums, which is also 36 units of additional housing right there on Long Beach Boulevard next to the Blue Line. And we have the vault, which is right adjacent off of Long Beach Boulevard, which is actually some artist lofts for the local community. About 20 of these lofts will have space for both artists to do their art and to live right off the Blue Line in the heart of Long Beach. Adjacent to that, on 1400 Long Beach Boulevard, we have Long Beach and 14th, which is 65 for sale condominiums, so that we ensure there's also a mix of both affordable as well as for sale product right there on the Blue Line on Long Beach Boulevard. And also on Long Beach Boulevard, at 1401, we have Axiom, 142 residential units, including 69 market rate and over 70 affordable units. And if you're exhausted about all these projects on Long Beach Boulevard, you should be because there's more coming. We believe that Long Beach Boulevard, adjacent to the Blue Line, is gonna be an exciting new place that will bring investment and ensure that people from our community of all income levels have a place to live that's also accessible to transit. So we're very excited about these projects and the projects just up ahead. Now transitioning off Long Beach Boulevard onto Anaheim in Central Long Beach, we have the Anaheim and Walnut Project. This project also will include a clinic on the first floor and has got a partnership with numerous community groups and the county to provide services across the city. This is a very exciting project over at Anaheim and Walnut. And you, many of you probably have driven by that big empty lot that's been empty for a long time. Well, it won't be empty for that much longer. In addition to that project, Habitat for Humanity, which has already built numerous homes in Long Beach, is building 10 for sale affordable townhomes 
along 14th Street Park here in the center part of our city in the Washington neighborhood. We are excited about this project and able to provide home ownership for first time homeowners, first time home buyers that may not have access typically uh, in the city. Absolutely, round of applause for Habitat for Humanity. Not too far from that site, over, we have the 469 West Apartments. This is a 40 unit affordable housing complex on PCH. So you can see the PCH, Anaheim, Long Beach Boulevard corridors are really filling in with affordable opportunities to ensure that the center of our city is strong. I've, I've mentioned this before, but these projects are gonna particularly help to ensure that people have housing and to focus on the area that currently has the highest levels of poverty in our city. Another proposed project right now, which is under review, is at 201 PCH, and this is 159 residential units right there at 201 West PCH Highway. And now let's transition to the part of the community that's got probably the most construction, and that is downtown Long Beach. But before we get there, let's give all of the projects and the developers that are building in the center of our city a big round of applause. So, if you're driving around or walking around uh, downtown Long Beach, uh, you know what's going on. Uh, there is a huge construction boom that is happening here in our downtown core. And when I, when I talk to folks across the city, I always share that a strong downtown is good for everybody. Whether you live in North Long Beach, in East Long Beach, uh, anywhere that you live, having a center of commerce where you have jobs, uh, where you're bringing in people is critical to a successful and full city. So we're very excited about what's happening right now in the downtown, and as you all know, there is so much more ahead. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening in our downtown court. For starters, we just opened up the first phase of the Long Beach Civic Center, which we're very excited about. As we know, this project has been a labor of love for us, for our city staff, um, and we have created two iconic and beautiful buildings right in the heart of downtown. And the most important part is that they're more accessible, it's more sustainable, and the building itself is open. It's transparent. To me, it's a reflection of where our city is going and what the future of our city is going to look like. Very proud of the Civic Center, our partners at the Port of Long Beach, and all the departments that are working together to provide the best services possible for our residents. And along with City Hall and our port headquarters, we also just this last weekend opened up our newest library, the Billie Jean King Main Library. <laughs> now, if you were one of the thousands of, of local residents that came down to the opening, uh, you just saw the excitement in not just all the young kids and the families but our seniors and our librarians and our community members that have access now to an open and inviting place of learning. Our new Billie Jean King Library is gonna be the center of education and research in our new downtown. This library is a library of the future. It's got the latest technology, the latest software and computers, a 3D printing lab, and of course over 300,000 books and resources for a community to check out and enjoy. And one of my personal favorites, because it was a strong request of mine, also the largest comic book and graphic novel collection <laughs> almost anywhere around. So I'm very proud of that. Check out our comics and graphic novel section at the Billie Jean King Mine Library. This, this, this library is a model of what the future of libraries are going to be across the country, and we couldn't be more proud. And of course, along with that library, we continue to do projects in and around the downtown. Regency Palms recently completed. Rose Park Roasters moved in right on the first floor. It's one of my favorite new spots to get, to get coffee, have salads, and enjoy uh, really get great treats as well. This is also bringing in and providing services for seniors in the North Pine neighborhood area. Projects that are coming up ahead are also completed. The Linden, right, ad right adjacent there on, on 4th Street. People are finally moving into this project. Great architecture, very excited about the future of this project, and residents are finally moving in. Also completed, the Huxton, 
This is a for sale project of which every unit has been sold. 40 townhomes right there on that Broadway block. Very exciting. I've met a lot of new neighbors there, and they love their new units. Also folks moving in to Park Broadway just across the street from the Civic Center. They're, they're beginning to move in folks that are moving in from all across the country and the state to live here right in the center of our downtown. And this is over 220 residential units at Park Broadway. Then we have the Ocean Air on Ocean Boulevard, also beginning to move in the very first residents that are coming in to this exciting project in the downtown. And all these projects, by the way, for a lot of folks that have been waiting, when are all the, down, the new residents coming in? They're all just starting to come in. So all these projects that we've been talking about for years, all these residents that we have been wanting to come to downtown to activate our streets and restaurants and our sidewalks, they're literally moving in as we speak and will be doing so in this wave of projects over the course of this next year. So it's gonna be a very good year upcoming, for, I believe, for our restaurants and small businesses. So the Ocean Air, a very quality project, and if you haven't gone to the back side of this project, there's a really cool slide. You can actually slide from the second floor and slide down to the first floor and, and get to the pike. It's an adult slide, so you all can slide down as well. <laughs> I plan to be the very first person to slide down, by the way. Uh, and so the Ocean Air is opening, is, is opening up right now and bringing in its first new residents. Um, also completed are 442 residences there on Ocean Boulevard. Uh, this project is actually uh, right there on the back side on Ocean, uh, just adjacent to Magnolia. Uh, this is almost 100 new residences. And again, seeing its very first wave of residents moving in to this project. And of course, if you have not been to the amazing and fabulous new extension of the Long Beach Museum of Art, the Long Beach Museum of Art has opened up a downtown gallery right here in the center and core of downtown that is beautiful and stunning. And we have to thank so many folks that were involved in it uh, and the incredible energy that goes around the center. A lot of people don't know, but the city, us and the taxpayers, own a huge art collection. The Long Beach Museum of Art displays the people's art, collection that the city has attained and gained over many, many years. And a lot of that art will be displayed here at the Long Beach Museum of Art downtown gallery space. Not too far from that is the Beacon. The Beacon is 121 units of senior housing, which we really need in our community, as well as an additional 40 units of other types of affordable housing. And this project is really stunning and will serve as a gateway coming into the downtown right there on Anaheim and Long Beach Boulevard. Also under construction is this project on Long Beach Boulevard over at well, the 1000 block right adjacent to the Beacon. Again, good architecture across the street from St. Mary's Hospital. And also under construction, if you walk down Pine Avenue, this is a project that will transform the North Pine neighborhood. It is 270 units of housing right there at 6 and Pine, right across the street from the, Mol the Molina and Technology Center that will activate that whole section of Pine Avenue and is currently right now under construction. In fact, you can see some of the structure coming out of the ground right now as you drive by and walk by. Also under construction is a project that Tony Shoshone and his team are building within the new streets development in the center of downtown. Again, under construction, and this will be 20 residential units, loft style and apartments right there in the center of that project, which by the way, will have some very exciting announcements in the months ahead, including some retailers and shops that are coming into that space. Also under construction, right behind the Civic Center on Pacific is the Pacific. This project, of course, has uh, some affordable units, but also over 160 apartments total. And this also has townhome units, so you can walk up right from the street. Uh, this project was a partnership also with the city and is adding to the growth there all along the Civic Center core. Again, tons of new residents moving in. This project is not complete, but you can see the facade going up right now as you drive by. And again, continuing this, this idea of building more hotel rooms, which we're doing, we're building hundreds and hundreds of new hotel rooms. This is a small boutique hotel project. It's 34 guest rooms, and it's currently right now under construction right there on Long Beach Boulevard, just adjacent to the promenade. This project you've probably seen as you drive by Alamitos, uh, just a few blocks from the Via Riviera. It's the Alamitos at 101 Alamitos. 136 condos, 
again, uh, bringing in the density that we need here in the city of Long Beach. And a project I'm very excited about. I think uh, you know, Tom knows this, and Mark Taylor, my chief of staff, know this. Uh, we, I, I'm a big believer that we've got to grow our skyline. We've got to grow it up. And we've got to continue to add to creating an iconic picture of our city. We have a downtown on the water, and we deserve to have an amazing skyline. Shoreline Gateway, which is currently under construction right now, will become the tallest building that we have in the city. It'll also be iconic. Uh, it'll complement the buildings around it, including the historic Via Riviera. And we're very excited and thankful to the development team. Let's give them a big round of applause for building this amazing project and building. Not too far on Ocean Boulevard, also adjacent to the Civic Center, we have the Ocean View Tower which is currently under construction, and we have, I think, some exciting announcements about this project pretty soon. Under construction as well is Sonata Modern Flats, adjacent to the new bridge that we built. This is a five-story mixed-use development with 113 residences and retail space. And thanks to Pacific Six and some great partners, we're right now adaptively reusing the Ocean Center. This is gonna be 80 modern apartments right across from the Convention Center great access to amenities, and a building that's been underutilized and undervalued for such a long time. So this is gonna be a showcase project that is currently right now under construction. <laughs> and same team, of course, right now, is reimagining one of our most iconic and beautiful buildings in the city of Long Beach, and that's the Breakers, of course. Uh, the Breakers is going to be a beautiful boutique hotel in our, in our the center of our city to serve the entire community. Um, what John Molina and his partners have planned is stunning and something that we all should be very, very proud of. Uh, this project will not only be an incredible hotel, it's gonna have some of the best restaurants in the city, some of the best bars and amenities for the entire community to use and to visit. So we're very excited about this. This will also be an additional 175 rooms. So as you can see, we have significant hotel construction right now happening in our city to meet the demand of our convention and our convention goers, and we're very excited about that. <laughs> and along with the, with the breakers, I wanna just take a minute to share with you what, what's happening with the Blue Line. Uh, as, you're, as you're all aware, um, I sit on the, metro, on the Metro board, and we haven't actually had someone from Long Beach on the Metro board in, in a while. Uh, in, in just a few couple of years, we have gotten a huge return on having an investment of having a board member speaking and talking about our city. We transitioned from the sheriff patrolling the Blue Line to Long Beach PD now patrolling the Blue Line. And in fact, have cut crime on the Blue Line by 50%. In addition to that, Metro is investing over $1 billion with a B right now in the reconstruction of the entire line from downtown Long Beach to downtown Los Angeles. As you could probably have been aware, there's major construction going up and down the line, and we've been reopening small parts of it for testing and for short trips over the last few months. In about a month from now, the entire blue line will reopen for service. And what riders can expect will be all new cars, enhanced safety, upgraded camera system, new aesthetics, including painted light poles, new lights, new landscaping, but most importantly, speeds will be faster. And so your trip, that's right, your trip from downtown Long Beach to downtown LA, our goal is to cut by 10 minutes. We've already cut it by seven minutes in current testing, so we've got three minutes to go to meet our goal of cutting that trip by a full 10 minutes. Now, in addition, for those that have enjoyed taking the express bus, and we've heard from a lot of folks that the express bus that we've had open during this construction time, they've really enjoyed, we're keeping the express bus from downtown Long Beach to downtown LA. The, 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 the members that are riding this bus absolutely love it. They feel safe. They get, on, they get on in downtown Long Beach and they go straight to downtown Los Angeles and go straight from the downtown LA station all the way straight back to downtown Long Beach. And so we're gonna expand the service, keep the express bus, and when we reopen the Blue Line, 
Our goal and our hope is to welcome writers back to a system that for too long has been underutilized and underused, but is also a huge investment that we need to take advantage of. So I'm really proud of these investments, and I want to thank the Metro staff. Let's give them a round of applause. I know we have a couple of them here tonight. Thank you for all of your hard work on this project. And along that, under construction, soon to open, is the Sean Lumaki Innovation Center. That will be bringing in some tech companies and innovation companies right there on Pine Avenue. And now we have some projects that have been approved and that have gone through the approval process and are waiting to begin construction, which we hope will happen here in the months and in some cases, year or so ahead. We have some new apartments coming to Locust Avenue, about 97 residential units. We have a residential project on 7th Street, which is about 19 units. We have on North Pacific Avenue, across from the current, the current uh, large project that's under construction, we have an additional 157 condos. This is about 5th and Pacific Avenue. We've got recently approved by the Planning Commission at 131 3rd on those two large empty lots at 3rd and Pacific. We've got this uh, amazing new project. One's a 23-story tower. There's about 340 total residential units on the site. Another important project for us that we're excited here in the downtown. Another approved project is at 131 West 3rd with 77 unit market rate units. We have, and of course, a project that we know is starting construction here in early 2020 is the Broadway Block. The Broadway Block is a huge project that is gonna bring together some great architecture, amenities, and residents really from across the region to live in this amazing space. We're creating 400 residential units of which 14 are carved out for, uh, for the Cal State Long Beach faculty and graduate students within the arts program to live within a small village community uh, in, in this Broadway Block project. This will have amazing places to eat, enjoy, and look at art as well. Very excited, this is a long time coming project that is also adaptively using part of the Acre of Books site. So I wanna just give that development team a round of applause for finally getting here to the finish line and getting this project, this project done. And of course, also recently entitled um, at the Planning Commission is the West Gateway Project. Uh, again, another iconic tower that when built will be the then the largest new tower uh, in the city of Long Beach. Uh, just a year ago, we announced this project here at, building a better, at build the Building a Better Long Beach event. Um, and I'm glad to know that it, this last year it has been entitled and passed through the Planning Commission, which if you're in the development business, you know that sometimes is a very hard process uh, to get through. Other projects that, that again are approved and are waiting to begin construction, the Broadway Magnolia Apartments at 500 West Broadway, the residences at Linden at 135 Linden, about 80 residential units there in the East Village, the Inkwell, which is an important part of connecting the promenade uh, in our city, and will fill in that whole area in the promenade adjacent to all the great restaurants that we have. So we are excited about this project. And just adjacent to the Inkwell will be the Aster, which is also a project on the Long Beach Boulevard side, right adjacent to the promenade. These two projects, the Aster and the Inkwell, will really fill in that promenade space and create some critical mass of residents that are, that are important for us to continue and support the restaurants and businesses in that corridor. And we're also really excited to announce that we've had a great partnership with Cal State Long Beach and our local business community and have opened up the Long Beach Business Accelerator at the World Trade Center. This is an incredible partnership with our Economic Development Department, uh, Sunstone Management, and we've leased office space as an incubator for small businesses and entrepreneurs here in Long Beach. It's the first one of its kind, and we're pretty excited about it. I also, I also wanna share um, two projects that are really important for us as we meet the challenges as they relate to homelessness and ensuring that all people have access to, uh, to, to home and services. Uh, this is a Lydia House expansion, which is a beautiful, beautiful project. If you can look, see the architecture uh, right there off of 14th Street Park. And we're also developing a Mercy Housing project on PCH, which will be 68 senior apartments for folks that have experienced homelessness. So these are important projects, and of course, I'm very thankful that the projects are, are right now proposed and under review. Another project for seniors is there on 810 Pine, which is the second phase of the Regency Apartments right next door. And we have and are beginning to work on the first phase of the Cal State Long Beach Village project 
that is happening in the center of downtown at City Place. As you probably are all aware, we have been discussing for the last two years of bringing Cal State Long Beach down into the downtown to create a real presence. We're excited that this phase, which is phase one, includes 14 classrooms that will be the next phase of that streets partnership right adjacent to the, all the development you see there off the off promenade and third. This new development will house classrooms, faculty, labs, and the university's new innovation center right in the center of downtown. Once this project and this phase is complete, adjacent to this project, we are reimagining and rebuilding what will be the new dormitory and residential village of students that will then supply these classrooms and these spaces in the heart of downtown Long Beach. So let's give Cal State Long Beach a big round of applause for doing this project. And this phase, uh, I'm, I'm really excited. The city, of course, stepped up, has contributed as well to this phase of the project, which we're very excited about moving forward. And we should hopefully within this year start seeing some activity and construction. I also now want to talk to you about the Long Beach uh, Civic Center mid-block. As you probably and you may remember, um, the, this project we will have uh, in the next months ahead uh, some exciting news, some renderings, uh, and a look at what the future of this mid-block will be. Now, as you are aware, uh, this mid-block is in between what will be the library and the new Lincoln Park and the rest of the Civic Center. Now, initially, if you remember, the project envisioned about 300 units on the site, along, of course, with a hotel project and retail and, and other amenities. I'm really happy to report that there is such an interest in developing and building housing that this developer wants to double the number and build 600 residential units on the mid-block site. So we are going to double the amount of units that will activate our civic center, our library, and our park. And for that, I want to give them a big round of applause. That's very exciting to have that many units. And the good thing, the good thing is that this project was already entitled for almost that many units. And so they can build it within the entitlements that they already received through the city council. In addition to that, we are exploring opportunity within the Mid-Block Civic Center to also build a village for faculty and local teachers. One goal of mine and of the city's has been to build affordable housing for what we call the missing middle. And that is folks that may not be low income, but still need assistance in housing. We have and are an education city. We have a great relationship with Cal State Long Beach and Long Beach City College and Long Beach Unified. So we're gonna work with our partners at those institutions, and we're already beginning to have some discussions to provide housing that is affordable within our Civic Center project for our community's teachers, professors, and educators. Let's give them a big round of applause. And I want to talk to you also about the Long Beach Civic Center at Lincoln Park. As we know, this park right now is being developed it's, we're almost done with the final design and should be out to the community really soon. This will create a spectacular entrance, of course, to the Billie Jean King Main Library and will be a park where there will be concerts and activity. And most importantly, in 2020, you will begin to see all the construction and activity as the former city hall, as well as the former library, begin being demolished to make way for both the park and the mid-center block. And so we're excited about this project and our partners who are building uh, the new Lincoln Park right in the center of our city. Other projects coming down the pipeline. We have a new hotel coming at 110 Pine Avenue on top of the Federal Bar, which we're very excited about. Potential 189 new rooms, very exciting. We have a, a, a full renovation of this 12-story building at 110 Pine. And we have also are getting an amazing steakhouse on this first floor that's being renovated. Um, it's one of the very well-known ones. So there's really only two, so you can guess which one of the two it is. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll be welcoming for our convention goers uh, and folks in Long Beach as they create this beautiful new kind of jewel box effect in the front of, of that building. And of course, this project, which continues to move forward because it's incredibly complex, is going to be one of the signature projects of this community, and that's the American Life Hotel, which is at 100 East Ocean. 
This hotel and this project, every six months, gets a little larger and a little taller uh, and a little bigger with hotel rooms. So we are excited about that. This will be 429 rooms and will be a premier hotel across Southern California. There will be an amazing pool deck, as you can see, uh, uh, in this hotel, and will provide the rooms necessary to really bring in the next level of conventions to the city and provide the next level of hotel service in our community. So we are anxious and excited about this project. And of course, work on Queen Mary Island continues, not as fast as I would like, but continues to move forward to, to do this development adjacent to the Queen Mary. Uh, as, as I conclude, I, I want to talk to you about um, a, a, couple, a couple announcements. Um, we've made some already, but I want, I want to share a few more. Long Beach, like a lot of the region, is beginning to attract a lot of technology jobs and a lot of interest from technology companies that, are, that provide really good jobs. Um, we have begun to see that with the opening of Douglas Park. Uh, we have begun to see that when Virgin Orbit decided to establish their global headquarters here. And of course, a lot of small, different technology shops and businesses have opened up across the city. But this is an area that is continuing to grow and we want to encourage. First, as you probably are all aware, Laserfish is incredibly exciting, growing, and has chosen to be in, in their headquarters in Long Beach as they expand. This is the second phase of that development. They're adding hundreds of new tech jobs here in Long Beach at their headquarters and reimagining the whole area around Long Beach Boulevard. We're really excited for Laser Vish. I know Councilmember Yoranga is here, who's been a huge part of this project as well. And I want to thank them for adding these jobs and expanding in our community. Let's give Laser Fish a big round of applause for the work they're doing. In addition to that, uh, I think everyone is aware that Virgin Orbit, or Virgin Orbit has put Long Beach in the space satellite uh, business uh, and is one of only a handful of companies right now that are doing space work, that are doing satellite work in our country. There's another company that's also doing the space work. It's called Spin Launch. And we're excited to announce today that Spin Launch is coming to Long Beach. This company, which is moving in not too far from Virgin Orbit, is opening up a 140,000 square foot facility where they'll be manufacturing their satellite work as will Virgin Orbit as they compete in a friendly way to see who can get satellites into space faster. We're very excited and I want you to join me in giving a round of applause and welcoming Spin Launch to Long Beach. And as Spin Launch begins to open up in our city, Virgin Orbit has decided to expand. They are currently, as you're all aware, in about 150,000 square foot facility. They are now going into a second facility, which is about 43,000 square feet. And as you know, Virgin Orbit is leading the space satellite race right now as it, as it relates to investment and excitement. So we're very grateful to Virgin Orbit that they made Long Beach their home, and we're also grateful that they are gonna be adding more good jobs to our community and expanding their business right there in the Douglas Park footprint. Let's give Virgin Orbit a big round of applause for the work they do. And you may or may not be aware of Zwift. Zwift is actually one of the leading tech companies when it comes to e-commerce as it relates to sports, especially around cycling and running and physical activity. They have taken over a huge part of the landmark building in downtown. In fact, if you look, 60,000 square foot expansion, they are adding hundreds of tech jobs to their company as they grow and become the leader in this space around technology and e-commerce. And so we're excited about Zwift. We've been meeting with their leadership. They love Long Beach. It is their headquarters. And we're hopeful that Zwift and others will encourage to, for other folks to come in and other tech companies to invest in Long Beach. So please give Zwift a round of applause for their investment and their growth in our community. And we're also incredibly excited about this project. Now, as we're all aware, the former site of the Globemaster is a huge facility adjacent to the airport. Right now, we are in talks with Goodman Corporate, who are building what will be an over million square foot park 
at the former facilities where we used to build, of course, C-17s and so many other amazing planes. This space is being envisioned by the developers as a center for light manufacturing, but also technology. In the months ahead, you are going to hear about some amazing brands and some amazing companies that want to re reactivate and use this space adjacent to the airport. What we have an opportunity here in Long Beach is to really be a leader in the next phase of space exploration and aerospace. And the Goodman Corporate Park is going to allow us to continue doing that work and to continue to invest in technology and innovation. And let's give them a big round of applause for all their amazing work and for their support. So now I want to talk to you as we, as we conclude a little bit about uh, the shoreline and about this large area that we call uh, PD6, which is a planning term. Uh, most of you know it, um, particularly if you look at the area around the convention center and around what's known as the elephant lot. Uh, this area is ready for a new vision and a new planning, not a planning process, not just for the elephant lot, but for the area around the convention center, the arena, all up along Ocean Boulevard, uh, and really that entire shoreline area. Now, everyone in this room is aware that we've been in discussions with the Angels uh, about a stadium on this site. And those discussions, while we can't say too much, uh, continue and are active. We are also aware and are, are very much um, in the know, as, as you all are, that the Angels is also very actively engaging with the current, their current home city in Anaheim to see if that stadium project can be built on that site. And so as those negotiations continue and are active and go into the end of this year, our negotiations with them also continue. And we're very aware that within the next couple of months, we will have a definitive answer about what the next step is with the elephant lot and the stadium proposal, of which, of course, Long Beach is only one of two cities that are being considered for the stadium. What the Angels also know in our recent conversations is that their interest in the site has created a flurry of interest from others to also uh, visit and be interested in the site. Right now, we are uh, visiting and uh, encouraged by the amount of interest um, from uh, major organizations and players that want to develop this site. And so what I will share with you is that in the next 30 days, our city team will be coming forward to the city council to begin a master visioning process that will not only include this proposed elephant lot site, but the rest of the larger PD6 zoning. And what I can guarantee you is that the level and quality of interest and the folks that are involved and are at the table uh, is impressive. And this project uh, is going to be, regardless of what it ends up, um, either a home run or a slam dunk <laughs> or a variety of other uh, uh, euphemisms that I could use um, that will happen on, on this site. I want to share with you that we're committed to a open and transparent community process. Uh, we are committed to ensuring that the neighborhoods and the neighbors around the site are included in this visioning. And regardless what happens with the stadium proposal, PD6 is much larger than that. And so we want to make sure that we are working and communicating with the entire community to redo, to redo and rebuild this site. So it is a critical piece of connecting the downtown to the waterfront, uh, and we're excited about the interest we're getting um, from, from across the country. Uh, and so with that, I just want to conclude um, just by saying that uh, I know that was a lot. You're probably all like sick of the, the, these projects. Um, but I, I, I want to say that uh, it's my philosophy and your team's philosophy uh, that every single unit of housing is a good unit. And Personally, I have, I have never not supported a unit of housing or a housing project that's come across my desk. We need to build more housing in our city. 
we have to focus on building density, especially in our downtown and along our corridors. We are in a housing crisis in the state of California, and it's our responsibility to ensure that everyone in our city has access, access to quality housing and housing that is affordable to them. And so that is our challenge and one that I also believe that we can meet. Uh, I wanna thank uh, all of you for being here, the members of the city council, Councilwoman Pierce, Councilwoman Susie Price, Councilwoman Stacey Mungo, uh, Councilman D. Andrews, Councilmember Yorenga, Councilmember Al Austin, and Councilmember Rex Richardson for their support. Without them, these projects would not be possible. And let's keep it supporting these projects, and next year we'll have even more to announce. So thank you very much, and have, have a good day.